Hey everyone's Jackal Wolf back in Sky Factory 4 with another five minutes. That's how I did it. Now, if you've been following along, you know that we are working our way through the advancement book. Last episode, we did the Age of All of the Things, OMG, LOL, and uh, we completed the uh, Cookie Clicker, the uh, Baby, or This Baby Can Fit So Much Matter, and the Who Stole the Cookies from the Cookie Jar. Uh, this was a very, very long and very, very difficult um, advancement, but uh, we are past it now. We are moving on. Uh, this episode, we're going to go over here and we're going to go with Gotta Mod Them All. This is a, a Tinker's Construct uh, mod advancement, uh, very similar to the Yo-Yo Master, although this one's a quite a bit more complicated. Uh, the Yo-Yo Master we did just a couple of episodes ago, and that's where we put every single Yo-Yo modifier on uh, a Yo-Yo. There are only six of those. Uh, got them on them all. We got 21 mods. So we've got quite a bit of work to do here. So let's get at this one really, really quickly. Uh, first off, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create yourselves a armor's manual. Now to do that, we are first going to need a materials and you. This is the standard Tinker's book uh, that is crafted by uh, taking a book and a blank pattern in a crafting table gets us the materials in you we take that materials in you and we place it with another blank pattern we now get our materials in you the armor addendum now this is going to be uh you know pretty much critical on taking a look at all the different things for the uh armor forge uh and you know sort of crafting your own armor so if we go and open it up we can kind of start flipping through here these are all of the uh, materials that you could use for all the pieces of armor i'm not going to get into that that is not what uh, this advancement is about uh, this advancement is all about working on the modifiers so again there are 21 different modifiers uh, some of them are you know better than others all of them are kind of really really interesting so before we can add mods uh, to any armor we're going to need to actually craft ourselves some armor first uh, very similar to how I did the yo-yo mod uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create armor out of paper this is going to give us the most modifiers possible this is not going to be you know totally functional we're just going to be throwing mods on left right and center just to get this advancement uh, in your world chances are you're going to pick and choose a little bit more carefully than this but what we're going to do is we're just going to go and create ourselves uh, four pieces of paper armor so each piece of armor is going to require a, a particular core so the helmet is going to require a helmet core uh, the chest plate is going to require a chest plate core uh, the leggings are going to require a leggings core and then the boots are going to require a boots core uh, very very simple I think we've done this uh, before uh, each of these armor cores are going to require a uh, armor plate and a armor trim pattern. So we're going to go and take the armor plate up there. We're going to go one, two, three, four. Four, and I am really, really low on material. Uh, we're going to take that armor trim and then we've got one and I am short. Do I have any more uh, paper in here? Yes, I do. I got eight more pieces of paper. Worst case scenario, I can go over to my sugar cane and grab a little bit there. We'll throw that in there and... We go up, so one, two, three, we are one short. Give me one second, guys, I'm gonna be right back. There's our fourth uh, paper armor trim. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to our armor forge. We're gonna go click on the helmet. We'll take the helmet. We'll take the uh, paper armor trims and the uh, paper armor plates. There we go, there is our paper uh, helmet. Uh, we're gonna take the chest pattern. I'm gonna flip that over. There is our paper chest plate. We're gonna take the leg core and there you go. There is our paper leggings. And then last, but certainly not least, we're gonna take the boots core and there you go. There are our paper boots. We're gonna take those down, we'll flip back over to our repair and modify section. Uh, this is where we're gonna add the modifiers to our pieces of armor. So uh, to start, let's go and open up that materials and new armory addendum. And let's start going through all the different modifiers. First up is speedy, uh, that takes redstone this is a stackable one uh we're just going to use a single piece of redstone and let's go and throw that on our boots so we'll throw the piece of armor in that middle spot there you go, piece of redstone, bonus speed, 0.1%. Not a super, super amount of speed, but you know, like I said, this is stackable. We're just not gonna bother about that uh, this uh, episode. So the next set of modifiers we're gonna take a look at are the resistance uh, modifiers. Uh, there are four of these. Uh, they are the resistance. Uh, you can strengthen your armor with a little bit of extra plating, uh, reduces uh, damage from all attacks, requires only one modifier, uh, not compatible with other resists. So we can only put one of these 
these on each piece of armor. So luckily we've got four pieces of armor. So as long as we put, uh, we spread these out, we should be fine. Multiple levels. So again, these are a stackable one as well. So there is standard resistance. There's blast resistance. There's projectile resistance. And then there is fire resistance. And all of these are, you know, really, really handy if you are going into, you know, certain situations. So to make ourselves a resistance uh, modifier, it is going to be any cast. I've got a bunch of blank ones that I accidentally made a long time ago, so I'm using up these ones uh, rather than using up a, a functional cast that I can actually do something with. But it is any cast, four obsidian, and four blocks of iron. That gets us our resistance uh, modifier. Uh, to make a blast resistance modifier, it is, again, any cast, four pieces of obsidian, four bricks, gets us our blast resistance uh, there is our projectile resistance, which again is any cast, four pieces of obsidian and four arrows uh, gets us a projectile resistance. Makes you kind of wonder, I, you would think the opposite would be true. I don't know why you would use arrows to protect yourself from arrows, but uh, that is Minecraft logic. Uh, next up is the fire resistance though. Again, any cast, four pieces of obsidian and four blaze powders. Uh, that gets us our fire resistance. So let's head back over to our armor forge. We'll start with our paper helmet and then we'll go throw our resistance in here. Like I said before, you can see it adds resistance. If I go try to add one more, it just nullifies the whole equation i guess so there we go we have now got a resistance on our helmet we'll take that out uh we'll throw the blast resistance on our chest piece we'll throw the projectile resistance on our leggings and then our on our boots we'll throw the fire resistance which kind of makes sense you kind of want uh, to be able to walk through fire i guess i don't know so there you go those are all of the resistance modifiers uh next up in the book is going to be some diamond and emeralds uh, these basically add uh durability to your armor so extra durability minor armor and toughness increase single use Fabulous, it's a diamond, so it's fabulous. 50% uh, base durability increase, single use again, and outrageous. So uh, you cannot stack these ones, uh, but we're gonna grab a diamond, we're gonna grab an emerald, and let's come back over here, and let's go throw the diamond on our uh, chest piece, and then we'll go throw the emerald on our leggings. And there you go. I love how the colors kind of spread around. You could really make some really interesting looking armor, uh, though you can't really pick where those uh, show up. So uh, next up, we've got Parasitic, which is to use uh, the bones of a wither skeleton to give your armor parasitic abilities. Uh, steals life from you to repair itself. Uh, won't kill you and will only take when necessary single use. Uh, while we're at it, we're going to go and work on the reinforced uh, modifier. Very similar to the resistance modifiers we did earlier adds a chance to not consume durability though so uh if you get hit there's a chance that you may not actually uh, lose durability uh stacks with previous levels of reinforce so this is one that you can stack up again and you know make it a little bit less likely that uh you're going to take uh, actual damage on your armor to make the resistance one it is eight pieces of obsidian and any cast in a uh, crafting table gets us our reinforcement and then we're going to come back over here and we're going to go and we're going to grab that necrotic bone and bring both of these back over to our armor forge so again let's go on our leggings let's throw that necrotic bone and let's go on our chest plate uh, the helmet and the boots seem to have the most uh, modifiers that are specific to uh, those pieces. Uh, the leggings and the, ch uh, the chest plate pretty much could take everything that's not specific to something else. So uh, I've kind of been throwing, uh, I've kind of been reserving the helmet and the boots for stuff that is uh, very, very specific to those ones. Um, so there we go. There is our reinforcement and you can see it's reinforced 20%, which is really, really nice. Uh, next up in the modifier book is going to be the Mending Moss and the Sticky uh, Modifiers. Mending Moss is really nice because it is another way of repairing your armor, you know, sort of passively. Uh, it stores and collects XP, slowly repairs the armor over time, uh, and you can have multiple levels of Mending Moss. Uh, sticky slows enemies that attack you directly, single use. So basically any mob that, you know, hits you directly is going to get slowed down, which is a uh, kind of cool. Uh, to make 
mending moss, we're first going to need to make ourselves some mossy stone. Uh, to make mossy stone, it is simply a piece of cobblestone and some vines. Uh, we've made both of these uh, previously. Uh, we're going to need nine pieces of mossy cobblestone in a crafting table. It gets us a ball of moss. Now, this ball of moss is not useful for us right, you know, sort of by itself. But if we take it, right click it on a bookshelf. You hear that little ding there? There you go. There is our mending moss. That is, this is what we're going to need to use as a modifier uh, for the cobwebs uh, if you don't have a dungeon somewhere you go off and find them in your uh, one of the you know different worlds uh, you can craft cobwebs uh, it is a string it is a slime ball and then two pieces of overworldly matter now overworldly matter is a, a byproduct of deep mob learning uh, when you're running the polymer clay through the simulation chamber uh, you get overworldly matter if you're using a overworld mob a data module. So we've done this before. I'm not going to get too far into it, but there you go. There is our cobwebs. We only need one. So I'm just going to reserve one right there and let's head back over here. So again, on our uh, paper chest plate, let's go and throw that mending moss and we're going to take that off. And then again, on our leggings, uh, because we've got two modifiers left, let's take that cobweb and there you go. So we are very, very slowly getting through all of these modifiers. Uh, next up on the uh, modifier list uh, is going to be shulker weight. Uh, smearing some popped coarse fruit on your armor should give you a much stronger jump. Uh, be careful on the landing though. So uh, each popped chorus fruit increases jump by a small amount it does not protect against fall damage a single level uh so again i think this is a little bit of a stackable thing uh you can get a little bit more of a jump boost out of it and then we're also going to do the soul bound a uh, a perfect match you love your armor not even death can part you from it a uh, soul bound is it, the grave, uh, the gravestone mod kind of makes soulbound a little useless, though I guess if you've got a really, really good set of armor and you're, you don't, it, it saves you going, finding your grave and getting your armor back. So, uh, armor remains in your inventory after death. Single use does not require a modifier. So this is good. This does not take up a modifier slot, uh, which is really, really nice. But, uh, we've got both of those over here. We've got our popped chorus fruit, which we get from our ender, uh, sapling, which, uh, I don't even think we can see it from here. Uh, and then our nether star, which was something else we got, uh, from deep mob learning. So let's go. Okay. We've got quite a few modifiers on the helmet let's go and throw uh that nether star on there that is now uh soul bound and then let's go well on the boots because again we are running out of modifiers on the other guys uh shulker weight we can get up to level two, uh, 20 on that which is look up in the sky increases your jumping powder power and actually i believe before we go add that one um this one can actually be added on any of the uh, armor pieces. I was thinking for a second there, it might be boots only, but uh, we've got it on our boots, which seems to make the most sense. So next up, we have got uh, Concealed, which is to apply some in invisible ink. Uh, will render your armor invisible to the naked eye, purely cosmetic. This is nice. I kind of wish I could add this to my glitch armor uh, because every single episode I am flipping my glitch armor on and off uh, because I don't, when I'm in my first person view, I like to, you know, to you guys to see my skin. Uh, the glitch armor is not the nicest looking armor, but it gives you creative flight and creative flight is a really, really great thing um i wish i could apply this uh, to it but it if you're in a similar position and you want to uh, just have your regular skin showing but still wearing armor, uh, you could add the, this invisible ink uh, modifier to it. Uh, also, there's going to be amphibious. This is something that is specific to the helmet only. Uh, it is going to store oxygen over time when equipped, uh, uses stored oxygen when underwater, can only be applied to helmets and then a single use. So very, very good if you are going, uh, very nice if you've got uh, one of the world types where you're completely uh, you know, submerged underwater uh, to make the invisible ink it is a glass bottle a piece of lapis lazuli a piece of glass and an ender pearl that gets us invisible ink to make the uh, next mod we're going to need uh, to make ourselves a couple of pieces first up is going to be prismarine crystals I do not have prismarine crystals in my world yet we can manufacture them from prismarine shards 
To make Prismarine Shards, we're going to need a little bit more of that overworlding in matter and a piece of Nether Quartz that gets us two Prismarine Shards. We're going to take those, we're going to run them through a Crusher. There's a couple of different ways of doing it. Crusher is one I just actually had right here over in this area. So we've run it through the Crusher, we've got four Prismarine Shards, and we're just going to go and grab our two pieces of glass and come back over to our modifiers. So again, you know, this one here was a uh, helmet only. We're gonna take our prismarine shards and two pieces of glass. Now you can't stack them together. They've gotta be spread out, but it doesn't really matter which uh, order they're in. Uh, as long as you've got the two pieces and the one, there you go. There is our uh, amphibious on our helmet. And then let's go and, you know what? On the helmet again, let's go throw that invisible ink. And you can see it actually disappears right from that preview there. Uh, I kind of, maybe I should have left this one for the end, but we throw that up there. You see, you can't see it. We throw on the other stuff. You can see it's there. So six and one half dozen the other. I, I like looking at the armor, but at, sometimes, you know, it's not, not that good. Uh, next up, we're getting very, very close. We've got the power gauntlets. Now, the power gauntlets, uh, there are powerful, dexterous, and telekinetic. Uh, Powerful increases attack damage, can only be applied to the chest plate, uh, cannot be applied with telekinetic or dexterous and single use. So here's our first little problem is we can't have multiple uh, gauntlets on the same piece of armor and the only piece of armor it can go on is the chest plate. So I've got a couple extra chest plates that I've you know built before, uh, so we can actually use these. But uh, powerful increases attack, dexterous increases attack speed, and then telekinesis increases increases reach distance. Uh, attaching this gauntlet of far reach should give you magical powers. Specifically, you'll find that you can reach things from further away. So I guess if you're mining or something like that, uh, you could actually interact with blocks uh, a little bit further away uh, than if you didn't have it. So uh, each and every one of these gauntlets is going to require a gauntlet base. Uh, to make a gauntlet base, it is a piece of leather and five pieces of iron. We're going to take the first gauntlet base. We're going to throw it into a crafting table with eight pieces of quartz. That's going to get us our gauntlet of power. Uh, very, very similar to get our gauntlet of dexterity. It is the base gauntlet and eight pieces of redstone. And then last but not least, to get our gauntlet of far reach, it is going to be uh, the base gauntlet, four lapis lazuli, and four eyes of ender. That gets us our gauntlet of far reach. Let's head all the way back over here. This is getting longer and longer to get back and forth. Before I forget, we're going to go chest plate, and I'm going to pull my obsidian chest plate from really, really early on. And then I had a wooden chest plate that I think I was just messing around with stuff. Uh, again, probably I probably did it in an episode. I don't even remember. There's this is episode 61 I believe we have I've put a there's a lot we've done a lot of different stuff uh, in our various worlds but we're going to take that first paper chest plate let's go put that gauntlet of far reach on there and you can see it actually changes the little bits down at the bottom I never really thought of them but those are the little gauntlet bits right there uh, we'll throw the gauntlet of power on the wooden chest plate and then I'll take our obsidian and our gauntlet of dexterity and we'll throw that one on there now this is just so we get the advancement uh, at the very end you know it's, it would be nice if we could apply all of them to all of our uh, armors, but uh, for now, this is kind of how we got to handle it. Next up, and we're getting really, really close to being done here. Uh, we are going to go and open up our book. Uh, we've got a uh, high stride and frosty and glowing. So actually high stride is way down here. Uh, this is another one that is a boot specific. So while we are here, let's do the high stride first. Um, we open that up. High stride, uh, using precision piston engineering, your boots can be given an extra lift. Increases step height, can only be applied to boots multiple level. So it takes two pistons. We're gonna go take our boots in here and we go one, two, there you go, paper boots. And we got one modifier left on that. And let's just go and run around. And basically, you know, here is a full on step and I can go up. Uh, if I, see, there you go, that is a full on like two block step. It's basically uh, step assist. Uh, with you know much higher steps so be careful you know if you're going you know someplace 
Uh, you know, I, I, th what I've got right now does not do two full blocks, uh, but it does do a block and a half. So uh, that is really, really cool. Uh, next up, we're going to have another boots only one. Actually, and you know, I should have left one of those modifiers up because the next two are boots only. Uh, we got frosty and we've got glowing. Uh, attaching something super cold to the soles of your feet could be cold enough to freeze water. Maybe doing it again can make you more powerful. Uh, freezes nearby water, negates damage from walking over hot surfaces, can only be applied to boots multiple levels. Uh, then glowing, some glowstone and a magical ender eye. Obviously, this uh, sees the light level. Uh, places a light source on low light level can only be used on boots cost of durability so uh, to make that we are first going to need to make ourselves uh, some packed ice so uh, we have a fr uh, froster we built this quite a, wise, a while ago uh, when we were working on our you know menagerie of mobs with the seeds and all of that uh, basically I've got some water being fed into it uh, I've got it turned off right now we can select which one we want we want the packed ice I'm going to turn it on as soon as that's done there. There you go. There is our piece of packed ice. Uh, we're going to take that packed ice. We're going to take two pieces of packed ice, two lily pads. That gets us our frosty soles. And then the next one we've got is the glowstone dust and the ender eye. And this is going to make the boots drop light sources uh, in places that are too dark. So uh, let's come over here and there we go. I'm still wearing them. We're going to go throw the boots up there. We'll throw the frosty soles down. And I believe it won't let us add this because... Yeah, not enough modifiers. So that is my mistake. So we'll do the frosty soles on this one. We'll come back out here. I know I've got some more boots. And let's grab those obsidian boots uh, that we made quite a ways ago. And we're going to go throw the ender eye. Again, we can't stack it up. We got to go and spread those out. But there we go. We've got obsidian boots. And I've just made the advancement. Got to mod them all, which is actually kind of surprising because... I am, I want to say I am two modifiers short and 21 out of 21. Okay guys, so that is really actually kind of surprising. I just went and double checked and yeah, we've done 21 mods. When I was testing it out, I must have did these in a different order um, because I did not get that advancement until I'd gotten these last two. Um, I know this is getting to be a little bit of a long episode, but let's finish off these last two uh, modifiers uh, here for the armor. First up is polished. This has actually been a question that somebody's asked me quite a ways ago um, on how to use this polishing kit. So that's a good option to do that. And then embossing, which is a, a way of modifying your armor. And actually let's go, um, Every armor needs a good polishing once in a while. You wouldn't want to see it rust, would you? Applies the same toughness level of the material used to the armor. So whatever material we make the uh, polishing kit out of, it's going to take that toughness and apply that to the piece of armor that we use this on. Uh, it is not going to swap over the traits, though. Uh, embossment is sort of the opposite. Uh, it adds the traits of a uh, particular material and a part, uh, but not the uh, toughness of it. So here's a way to kind of modify an existing armor uh we're, we're gonna do is we're gonna grab that piece of sand and then we're gonna grab the rest of this stuff so i've got some manielium uh already cooking over there that's what we're gonna go and make our polishing kit out of and then we're gonna need the rest of these materials uh to do this so let's head back over here and to make a polishing kit i've got a polishing kit uh pattern that's something you can just you know make with your pattern I've got some Manielium from when we did the yo-yos. We're going to go click that on. This is going to make us a Manielium polishing kit. Now, this is going to allow us to get the um, toughness of the Manielium into the paper armor. And there you go. So we're going to take that out. We're going to come back over here. Uh, now, I don't believe this is an actual modifier, but we're going to take the helmet. If we look up here, it's got a toughness of zero. We're going to take the Manielium polishing kit and a piece of sand, and there you go. We've now got a toughness of three. So we're taking the toughness of the Manielium uh, and applying it to the helmet without it actually being made of Manielium. So there you go. That one is really, really easy. Uh, next up, let's go and we'll do the paper leggings. So we're gonna take this Manielium plate, we're gonna add it up here, and you can see it's already given us the trait of prideful. It's given us a little 
little bit more durability uh, and it's increased the toughness a little bit as well which is really really good uh, we can go one step further though and we can use uh, this uh, manielium plate to uh, emboss it to the manielium so we're going to need the uh, green slime crystal we're going to need a blue slime crystal we're going to need a magma slime crystal and then we're going to need a block of gold and then we get that additional embossment doesn't make a lot of sense when you start with paper uh, but say you had, um, you know, a, a different material and you wanted to bring in a, a statistic for it that was, you know, worse than uh, what you've got. So you don't want to swap out pieces uh, to make it worse. You just want that trait that's going to make it the, the trait better. So uh, this does not make a whole lot of sense uh, from a... Uh, strategic point of view to go from paper to manielium and not take that manielium uh, trait or not take that manielium durability. But uh, there are cases where you're going to want this uh, because the existing one is better than the durability of the one that you're swapping in there. So there you go. There is our paper leggings and we have now got that advancement uh, in our advancement book. Got to mod them all. Let me know in the comments below, guys, if you did any of those uh, any differently than uh, I did. I would love to hear from you guys if there are uh, different ways of going about them. Let me know what your favorite modifiers are, because there are some really, really good ones in there. Uh, more than you could probably use on a half decent, um, you know, set of armor. Like paper was the only way I was able to get all of those pretty much on uh, just one single set. If it wasn't for uh, the fact I messed up on the boots, and if it wasn't for the uh, gauntlet of power which can only be applied to chess pieces and there are three of them uh, so we did have to make three chess pieces for that but if you enjoyed this video please think about leaving a like and a subscribe uh, you can follow me on twitter at jackal wolf also check out the description below there will be a link to my discord page i would love it if you guys stop by to say hi as well there will be a link to my patreon page if you enjoy this channel, if you enjoy this content and you want to support, stop by, check it out. There are a lot of great perks there for all of my supporters, but that is it. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.